All right, welcome to episode 14 of the DIY 8-bit computer series. And in this episode, uh, all we're going to do is add chips to the peripheral module. Um, previously, that peripheral module only contained sockets for ROM and RAM. Uh, today, we're going to add um, three peripheral chips that we um, prototyped in the last episode, um, an 82C55A um, peripheral interface adapter, 82C54 timer counter, and a 63B50 uh, asynchronous communication interface adapter, basically a UART chip. Um, and uh, as you will see, we're going to have to do a bit of debugging to get this to work. Uh, okay, let's get started. Okay, so I've made a little bit of progress on the uh, second module for the 8-bit computer, and specifically uh, on this board, which contains the ROM and the RAM and the peripherals, I have wired in the 82C55A uh, peripheral interface adapter chips, basically uh, 24 GPIO pins uh, that can be controlled by the host CPU, and I have two of the ports, port A and port B, uh, wired onto these uh, pin headers so that they can be accessed externally. Uh, port C is wired onto uh, pins on the back plane, and I'm going to use those, uh, basically those outputs on port C to control, uh, you know, various uh, system components. Um, one thing I'll mention here is that um, I have decided to do most of the wiring um, on the back of the, of the board uh, rather than on the front, and essentially the problem I ran into is for this particular type of proto board, there's not a huge amount of room um, between the, the, the rows of chips if you're using, you know, the wide uh, uh, dual inline uh, chips. And, and so I, I just kind of didn't really have a lot of room to access the, um, you know, the, the holes that where I could make connections to the pins of the um, 82C55A here. But it, it was fine. Um, no big deal. So I have uh, continuity tested um, all the connections on this chip and they seem to be good. So uh, let's see if it works on the backplane. Okay, so I've got module two back in the back plane and here's the core module as usual. And uh, I have uh, eight jumpers going from the pins of port A uh, onto the spreadboard here. And we're going to uh, use this uh, hex display to display uh, whatever value is being output on uh, the uh, eight bits of port A. So uh, let's power it on and see what happens. And uh, this is good. So this is the count program where uh, the program is essentially just counting up, you know, from zero to 255 and uh, sending the resulting bit pattern out via port A on the 82C55A. So this looks good. I think uh, we can count this as a success. Uh, okay, so uh, next project is to get the 82C54 timer counter chip onto module two. So uh, let's work on that. Okay, so I've got the socket wired for the 82C54, and uh, once again, I did quite a bit of the wiring on the back. I uh, did a little bit on the front, just tried to do whatever was easiest. So uh, I have continuity tested it. Let's see if it works. All right, so the count program that it outputs a count using the 82C55A uh, is still working, so that's good. We haven't screwed things up too seriously. So uh, next, let's see if we're getting some reasonable frequencies on the uh, clock outputs of the 82C54. So here's our test setup, and what we're doing is we have the uh, e-clock, which is 921.6 kilohertz that's generated by the CPU, the 82C54, specifically uh, units 0 and 2, are going to divide that uh, e-signal by 6 to produce a uh, signal with frequency 153.6 kilohertz. And we should basically see that frequency on both pin 10 and pin 17 uh, of the 82C54 because those are the outputs for uh, unit 0 and 1. So let me see if I can get to... Um, pin 10 there. Uh, did I get that? Oh, wait, that was pin 9. Okay, pin 10, 153.6 kilohertz. Perfect. Uh, and then this, I believe, is pin 17. Um, okay, good. 153.6 kilohertz again. So uh, I think the 82C54 is working, so that's good news. All right, um, next step, and the last step for uh, Module two is to add the 6350 uh, ACIA uh, UART chip. All right, so let's do that. 
All right, so here is the 6350 UART uh, wired into the circuit, and I have the FT232RL USB serial module here as well so that the um, 6809 system can talk to the host PC. Uh, I was actually able to do a lot of the connections uh, on the top side of the board. Uh, I did do uh, data bus connections uh, on the back side of the board. Um, and I've continuity tested it, and I think it's good, so let's give it a test. All right, so we've got a problem here, unfortunately, and uh, I've taken the 6350 and the USB serial converter module out, and I'm running the test program for the 82C54 timer counter, and I'm seeing some strange behavior. So if I um, probe the E signal from the uh, CPU, uh, that looks fine, so 921.6 uh, kilohertz. I should be seeing um, that divided by six, which is 153.6 kilohertz on pin 17 here. Uh, and instead, uh, I'm seeing nothing. And uh, same thing occurs on uh, pin 10 here, which should be the output that goes to the UART. Uh, also not seeing a, a reasonable uh, frequency on that output. And so um, I think what may be happening, and also the, the hex display that should be counting up um, basically based on output from the 82C55A uh, is, is frozen. I think there is a problem with the chip selects. Uh, it could be that I shorted something uh, as I was soldering and, and uh, the peripherals are not getting a clean uh, enable signal. So uh, let me check the board and see if I can figure out what's going on. All right, so I've got the oscilloscope powered on and I am now going to probe uh, the chip select pin on the 82C55A. And as you can see, it is basically just stuck high. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's no point at which it's being asserted. So the 82C55A has no idea, uh, that the CPU is trying to talk to it. And, and so that is clearly, uh, a concern. Uh, it does seem to indicate, uh, maybe a problem with the glue logic, which is, uh, quite strange. I wonder if I, uh, fried a chip or something. So, um, I guess I will continue to investigate. All right, so I'm going to try an experiment to see if I can figure out what's going on. And I have removed the uh, peripheral module uh, from the circuit, meaning I have just the core module. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on a breadboard, um, map a single 74ATT574 uh, register. And I'm just going to send you know count values to that register. Um, mapping it at the uh, address where the 82C55A would normally go. And I've um, written this test program so that it doesn't require any RAM uh, to execute since the, perif uh, the peripheral board has the RAM on it. So if this works, if this program works and I can see these count values being generated, uh, essentially what that's going to tell me is that uh, the core module is fine and the peripheral board uh, has uh, the issue. So uh, let's see what happens when we run this program. All right, so this continues to get stranger and stranger. I've got the test program running and it should repeatedly be writing uh, a byte to address 8000, which decodes to the first um, chip enable line. So this is the signal uh, for that uh, chip enable and uh, nothing absolutely nothing. So there's something going on on the, the core module and it doesn't seem to be uh, generating chip selects for uh, decoded I.O. addresses. So uh, I'm wondering if one of these uh, 3 to 8 decoder chips is bad. I think I might try uh, replacing them and seeing if that uh, helps out, but it, it's quite odd. I'm not sure what's going on. All right, so I'm clearly an idiot because uh, here I am probing the chip select for the first I.O. device, and uh, it's in. I've got the oscilloscope in run mode. Uh, it kind of looks like nothing's happening, except that you'll notice that the uh, once in a while it says triggered. Well, if we uh, single shot capture, yeah, there is totally uh, a perfectly good um, chip enable pulse uh, on uh, on that uh, output. And let's see, what's the uh, what's the time base here? Uh, 200 nanoseconds per division. So yeah, that's a good uh, microsecond long 
Um, so I think actually we're generating reasonable chip selects. This is Ingo. All right, uh, all right. Let's see if we can get that uh, I/O port demo working. All right, some good news finally. Uh, there was a bug in the test program. I was using the wrong instruction to store the contents of the B register to memory in order to write to this output port. So uh, now that that's been fixed, if we power on, uh, we do indeed get increasing counts on the hex display. And so that uh, that's very good news because it does imply that the core module is still uh, functional. So now we need to continue debugging the peripheral module. So uh, let's see what we can find out. All right, so we're going to try the test program again um, now that we've verified that the core module is still working. And I have the uh, peripheral module installed, although most of the chips are, are not populated. Um, so I'll power on uh, the circuit. And yeah, clearly this is not uh, working. So for some reason, uh, just the presence of the peripheral module uh, causes the, the system not to work. So um, let, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, and, and just to confirm that it's the peripheral module that's causing the problem, I've taken the peripheral module out again, uh, power the system on, test program works again. So uh, yeah, more, uh, more testing on the peripheral module is needed. All right, I have a potential explanation for what's going on here. Here we're looking at the bottom side of the peripheral board. Right here, it looks like there's a blob of solder that is uh, shorting this pad to ground. And uh, certainly if there is a stuck bit on the data bus, uh, that's going to cause all kinds of problems, including uh, corrupting the um, instruction opcodes that are being retrieved from memory. So uh, let's, uh, let me see if I can verify that there's a short there. All right, so here's the peripheral module. Um, here's the uh, socket for the 82C54. That is the ground pin. Pins one through eight are the data bus. So here's D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2. So D2 has a short to ground. So I think that's our problem. Um, I'm going to uh, clean up that blob of solder and see if that fixes the problem. All right, so I think I got rid of that solder blob. So let's check these. Uh, data bus pins again, so D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, D0, uh, no shorts as far as I can tell. So uh, let's try the test program again with the, the, the peripheral module installed and see if it, uh, if it works. All right, so here is the peripheral module back in the system and we've still got our uh, counting uh, test program here, so let's power it on. And oh, this is fantastic. Okay, good. So it is counting up again. Um, so I, I think it's looking like things may be working again. So I'm going to put the chips back in the peripheral module and uh, let's see what we can see. Okay, I've got the 82C55A and the 82C54 back installed in the peripheral module, and I have the 82C54 test program uh, loaded, and that will display the counting pattern uh, using port A on the 82C55A, and it should also generate our 153.6 kilohertz uh, baud rate uh, generating uh, frequency on the 82C54 here. Uh, so let's power up. Uh, okay, good. We're seeing the count pattern um, on the hex display, so that uh, implies that the 82C55A is working. Uh, all right, let's now test those frequencies to make sure that they are working. All right, so just as a quick test, I want to see that uh, I'm getting 153.6 kilohertz on pin 17 uh, of the 82C54 here, so 13, 14, 15, 16, 17... If I can get that on there. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, good. So I think the 82C54 is working. All right, let's finally try to see if we can get our 6350UART working and communicating with the host PC. Okay, so I have the 6350UART and the FT232RL USB serial converter module both installed on the peripheral board. And uh, I have my terminal program uh, uh, running and when I power the system on what we are hoping to see is the uh, all your base are belong to us message that the uh, 
ACIA uh, test program sends to uh, the, the host PC. So let's power on. And there it is. So this is really excellent. Um, it does imply that the serial port is, uh, is working. And um, yeah, we can now uh, do communications between the 6809 system and the host PC. Okay, well, that was quite an adventure, uh, but we actually have arrived at a pretty significant point, uh, which is we now have the core module completely working, so that's the CPU and the glue logic. Uh, we have 16 uh, external GPIO pins, we have a timer counter, we have um, the uh, UART, and we have the USB serial converter module, so we can communicate with the host PC. We have 32K of static RAM, uh, and this is more or less a complete um, and somewhat self-contained computer at this point. So uh, there are basically two things I want to do uh, going forward. Uh, I would like to develop um, a uh, serial ROM monitor to basically allow us to kind of control and test the system uh, using uh, a terminal program. And then, of course, I would also like to uh, add uh, additional capabilities to the system, such as uh, hardware interrupts, uh, keyboard controller, uh, eventually a video display system. Um, okay, so uh, that's it for this video. See you in the next video.